So today I'm going to show you how to create this animation in Cinema 4D. So if we have a look at the working file, basically what we have is a torus under a corner and we have the two formula vectors basically driving this. So if I hit play, you can see what's happening where we have the, the corner that's basically going up in the Y, scaling out, lowering on the Y and then going back to zero. So if I turn the pawns down to one, Basically see the scaling up and scaling down and then going back to its original size. So like I said, this is really just all driven from these two formula vectors. So see we've got the position where it's just rising up and down. And we've got the scale where it's going from its normal size and it's getting bigger. Going back to its normal size and then going smaller and then finally back to its original state. So now we understand this, let's jump it into a new file. So what I'm going to do then is add in a corner and we'll add the torus under this. It needs to be a linear corner. We'll zero out the Y and we're going to raise this to eight. So under the torus, um, just going to take the pipe radius down to 10. So this is looking okay, so let's add in the formula. And because I had the corner selected, it added the formula in already. So just make sure it's in here. And I'm going to change this to position. So position, we want it to go up and down on the y-axis. So we'll zero that and we'll just make that 50 on the y-axis. And because we want it to go up first and then down, we're going to change this to a cosine. And the project time, I'm just going to lower to 0 0.125 or else it's, it's really quick. So that's the position set up. If I hit play, you'll see them move up and down and pass through each other. So let's then drop in the scale. So parameter, what you come to scale. And I'll just make this 0 0.5. And we're going to change this to a sign graph. So the sign graph, basically what that does is it means that starts off at the normal size and then as it goes up it's going to get to its largest it's going to come back down to its normal size and then underneath it's going to be basically half the size and then back to normal so it's scaling up it's going from normal scaling up back to normal scaling down and then back to normal again so let's make sure we add this under the effectors tab and if we hit play we'll see we have the animation starting to take shape now What's happening here with the scale formula is it's not only just affecting the ring radius, it's also affecting the pipe radius too. So basically we have these skinny ones in the middle and these fat ones on the outside. So I prefer to kind of keep a, a uniform look. So you can do this actually by using a sweet nerbs instead. So let's just hide the corner for now. And what we're going to do is create our sweep. So what we're doing is we're basically sweeping a circle around a circle. So if I drop these in and I'm just going to change this to a hundred. If I change the first one to ten and um, but then I just need to make sure that the larger one is on the XZ plane. So basically we're sweeping this kind of smaller circle here around this larger circle and that's giving us this a torus shape. So Obviously right now we've only got one of these, so um, basically the smaller circle can remain uniform, but we need more of these larger ones. So let's drop in a corner, and we'll just drop this one in here. Again, same sentence before, make sure this is linear. Up this to 8, and zero out this Y value here. So we can now add in our effectors, so scale and position. So if we hit play now, you see that we've got the animation there with the, the circles, that seems to be working fine. But the sweep is actually only sweeping a smaller circle around one of these kind of larger splines. So in order to do that, what we need to do is add in a connect object. If we do drop that in here, like so, so it's basically saying, take this smaller circle and wrap it around basically all of these, it's connecting all of these together. And here we have the, the final animation. So, like I said, you can um, 
make them slightly larger if you want, just by going in and up in the radius of the first circle. For the position, you can come into the parameters and you can increase the Y value, which will make it a lot more vertical, which is quite interesting. Or obviously you can lower that, just to make it a bit more condensed. Obviously with the speed as well, if you'd like it to go faster or slower, you can come in and edit the project time on the position and on the scale. So that's it for the animation part. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll take you through the lighting, the lighting and texturing of this in Redshift. Speak soon.